begins. Next stop, Kathmandu. For the party, staying alive. <laughs> That's crazy. First thing we do, change some money. Now I'm a billionaire in rupees. We're going to do what every girl's dream is to do. Shop till they drop. And as you can see, they got these coloured bits of material flying off the sides. And they're actually prayer flags. So we're on the first day of the acclimatisation. This is officially the rest day. We're just actually, instead of resting, we're going to walk up higher and uh, gain a bit of altitude before coming back down to sleep low. The best way to acclimatise. But right at the top, I think we're going to be rewarded with some fantastic views of Mount Everest. Thanks to these yaks, we don't have to carry any of our equipment to base camp. All of our technical climbing gear goes on these bad boys. Thank God. Now just occasionally, you get caught in a traffic jam and the yaks are gonna come by. Hello. It's a bit of a squeeze on the suspension bridges. Okay, so today we're in Pangbashen, where we're getting blessed by a monk for good luck on our climb. Now I've given him a necklace, so that's gonna be blessed for good luck, but not before. Give him some money. Hey, so we're one day off base camp. We're about 4,620 meters at the moment. And as you can see, waking up to this sort of scenery this morning was absolutely fantastic. So behind me is the impressive peak of Nupsi, which stands at around 7,800 meters. And I've just trekked up through this amazing valley, surrounded by all these Himalayan peaks. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're currently about 5,100 meters. In a couple of hours time, we're gonna be arriving at Mount Everest Base Camp, home for the next couple of weeks. And behind me, you can see the huge Kumbu Icefall. At 5,300 meters, this little beauty here is home for the next three weeks. And as you can see with the Kumbu Icefall behind me, I got a cracking sight to wake up to. This is where the fun begins. It's five o'clock in the morning, and we've been climbing from the Kumbu Icefall now for about two hours. We've crossed a couple of ladders, nothing too difficult at the moment. As you can see though, it's an intricate maze of crevasses and glaciers. It's amazing. Light's starting to come up now, so crossing the ladders is gonna be a bit more, uh, it's gonna be better. At least it's not gonna be dark. It's a bit scary crossing the ladders in the dark. So, we're checking at the top.
approaching the real danger zone now. You can see these huge lumps of ice is overhanging and the pure danger is that they fall over. And then we've got the avalanche risk on this side. No time to hang around. We've got to get moving. It's so scary. These massive clumps of ice have come down in a massive avalanche. The rope goes under all of these boulders. So we can't clip in at the moment. This is not a place I want to hang around. Cut. We've arrived in Everest Camp 1. We're about 5,900 meters and we're on a mission to get some water. Now, to get water, we melt snow. But a bowl this big's only going to get about a quarter of a liter. So we need something a lot bigger. So I'm going to fill up one of my rucksack liners full of snow using this shovel, which I've nicked off someone, and we're going to then melt it all. Because we need to drink about three liters every couple of hours to stay hydrated at this altitude. Let's get to work. Surprisingly hard work at this altitude. Let's get melting. We've got some ice to melt boat. And then just behind me, just out of shot, is the peak of Mount Everest, which I've been staring at all the way now from Camp 1 leading up to Camp 2 behind me. So the journey from Camp 1 to Camp 2 takes us through the Western Coombe, where it's not the altitude of 6,400 meters that you've got to worry about. It's the heat and the UV rays. You see, all the light and the heat's reflected from the snow in the Western Coombe and off the surrounding mountains and off the Lhotse face behind me. And it acts a bit like a satellite dish. It focuses all that heat and light into one place, me. Consequently, it gets real hot and the light can damage your eyes real quick. So you've got to make sure your eyes are real covered up, not just at the front, but from the underneath and from the sides as well. Having experienced it is no easy feat. And the views 
the Western Cum are amazing. And round here is the best side of all, if the camera follows me. About, behind me, behind me is Mount Everest. And you can see the winds coming off it. It is absolutely phenomenal. The winds coming off the Lonesy face has been blowing rocks the size of people's heads down. One took out my camera and my bag, but I tell you what, I wouldn't change it for the world. This is Camp 3 on Mount Everest, and I am Rob Bradley, and this is How to Live Life. Woo! Yeah! Hey! I very quickly realized when I got to Camp 3, that target was not a big enough target for me. So we reset the target to push as high above Camp 3 as we could. We've made it here to the yellow band, a band of rock just below the South Coal, about halfway between Camp 3 and Camp 4. People don't leave Camp 3 without oxygen normally. And I can tell why. It's real hard to breathe up here. It's real hard to talk to you guys here on the camera as well. There's about a quarter of the oxygen at this altitude as there is at sea level. You can see the jet stream coming off the top of Mount Everest. It's just crazy. But as you can see, coming halfway from Camp 3 to Camp 4, it really does look like you can touch that summit. It is fantastic. The views, the views are indescribable. They have literally brought a tear to my eye repeatedly. In a minute, I'm going to show you the view down the Western Coombe, down the Lhotse face, which I've just spent the majority of the day climbing. It's my last day on the mountain. This is my highest altitude ever. We've broken through the barrier Camp 3 and made it halfway to Camp 4 without oxygen. We've had views like this. I can't think of a better last day on this mountain. Aim high, live life to the full because you only get one chance in life. Don't waste it. This is Rob Bradley on the most epic adventure of my life so far. Signing off.